Welcome to the Introducing Mastercam X video. Mastercam X represents an exciting new chapter in the evolution of Mastercam software. Mastercam X is the culmination of thousands of hours of development and beta testing by many dedicated and hardworking people. Many of the existing changes and enhancements to Mastercam X are the direct byproduct and result of what our loyal Mastercam users have been requesting over time. This new platform will also provide a solid foundation and framework for future growth and advances in machine tool technology. The purpose of this introduction video is to provide you, our valued customers, some basic insight and overview information about the extensive changes and enhancements to Mastercam in an easy to understand and simple format. While this introduction video is not a substitute for formal training, the primary objective is to familiarize you with the new Mastercam X interface and work environment. Additionally, this video will provide some upfront insight into not only the look and feel of the new software, but also some baseline understanding of the new streamlined workflow and the supporting vocabulary behind it. My name is Chuck Beckus, and I'm here with our Mastercam application engineer, David Canigliero. I'll be your host for the next 25 minutes or so, narrating the video and software interactions while David drives the software for us. On behalf of everyone here at CNC Software and the entire Mastercam distribution network, we'd like to thank you for choosing Mastercam. So without further ado, let's get started with our overview and introduction to Mastercam X. Welcome to Mastercam X. Prior to us demonstrating actual modeling and machining inside Mastercam X, we're going to begin by providing a very basic overview of the new Mastercam X interface. Let's begin with the menu bar at the very top. The menu bar has been organized in an effort to make legacy users feel comfortable immediately. You'll notice that the menu bar choices closely resemble the familiar root menu system that Mastercam used for many years. I'll go ahead and access the create line endpoints function. Notice the icon next to this function. This icon is the same icon used in the Sketcher toolbar to create a line from endpoints. In an effort to ease your transition, we have provided this as an aid to help you get familiar with all of the icons on the Mastercam X toolbars. Underneath the menu bar, you'll find the Mastercam X toolbars. A toolbar is simply a grouping of common functions. Toolbars can be docked in different locations on the interface, both horizontally and vertically. So I'll go ahead and undock the XForm toolbar by left click dragging it onto the graphics area. I can place my toolbar anywhere on the graphics area. I can dock it on one of the sidebars or I can even dock it at the bottom of the screen. These toolbars are completely customizable. You can choose to customize an existing toolbar or you can create a brand new toolbar as you wish. Toolbars can also be turned on and off. I'll just go ahead and turn this one off. To turn a toolbar back on, you simply right click in a toolbar area on the screen. Here I have a list of my available toolbars. I'll select here to turn my XForm toolbar back on and before I move on I'll dock it at the top once again. Any custom toolbar that you create will be available on this form for future use. So if I create a toolbar and I name it Custom Toolbar, I'll see the name Custom Toolbar in this list. One of the many new enhancements for Mastercam X is the addition of the most recently used or MRU function bar. It's located on the right side by default. The MRU function bar tracks your most recently used functions and keeps them handy and available in a convenient location for quick access. So if I go ahead and sketch a line and then delete that line, Notice that the line and delete functions have been added to the MRU function bar. You can establish how many functions this toolbar will hold for you in the system configuration dialog box. At the bottom of the screen, we have the Mastercam X status bar. This contains the functionality that was formerly located in the secondary menu in previous versions of Mastercam. The status bar provides quick and easy access to, as an example, system color, your levels management, system attributes, and other functions found in the old secondary menu. Next we'll cover the ribbon bars. Ribbon bars are located at the top of the screen under the toolbars. 
Ribbon bars look similar to toolbars, but function much more like dialog boxes to allow us to interact with Master Cam X. This is the general selection ribbon bar, and it's used to select entities in Master Cam X. This is the auto cursor ribbon bar, and it's used to manually enter XYZ coordinates or control auto cursor snapping behaviors. This one here is the function ribbon bar. I'm going to go ahead and access line creation to wake this ribbon bar up. Basically, it takes the place of the primary menu and prompt area inputs used in previous versions of MasterCam, providing MasterCam X users a single place to interact and input information as needed while working in MasterCam. Also, you will see the dynamic prompt area. It can be moved anywhere on the screen, and a simple right click will allow you to change its size. Next, we'll move over to the Operations Manager. The Operations Manager now contains both the Toolpath Manager and Solids Manager. I can turn the Operations Manager on and off with the Alt-O command as in previous versions, or I can now select View Toggle Operations Manager from the menu bar. To view the Toolpath or Solids Manager, you simply select the appropriate tab accordingly. Moving over to our Graphics area, if you right click in the graphics area, a customizable menu appears. At first glance, it appears to be the same as the right click menu of old. However, the right click menu in Master Cam X is now completely customizable and you can add a virtually unlimited number of functions to it. I'll go ahead and add line creation to it. And now you can see that Create Line has been added to the bottom of the menu. Also brand new for Master Cam X is the ability to access dynamic pan or dynamic spin on the middle mouse button. I want to bring up a sample file to illustrate, but first let's take a moment to discuss file management. In Master Cam X, files are simply saved or opened regardless of format. For example, file save or save as can now support all the file types that you see listed here. Just like file open, now supports all of the file types that are listed here. So basically files are opened or saved in Master Cam X. And of course the formats for opening and saving will depend upon your license translators. So now I'll go ahead and open up my sample part. By default my middle mouse button is set to pan. So let's enter the Master Cam X system configuration dialog box to change it by selecting settings from the menu bar and configuration from the drop-down. The Master Cam X system configuration dialog box contains much of the same functionality as in the screen config settings page in previous versions of Master Cam. I'll select screen from the topics list to access my screen page. And down here on the right I can choose pan or spin for my middle mouse button. So I'll select spin. Notice the green check mark next to screen in my topics list. New for Master Cam X, this green check mark indicates that a change has been made for this page. So I'll click Apply and OK. So as you can see, my middle mouse button is dynamically rotating the model. My middle wheel still zooms in and out. And if I hold the Alt key, my middle mouse button is now in dynamic pan mode. Some common hotkeys from previous versions that have been carried over include F1 is still zoom window, F2 is unzoom, Alt F1 is fit to screen, Alt S is still shade and unshade the model, and F9 still displays the system origin. For the complete list of hotkeys and shortcuts, please refer to your quick reference card which came in your Master Cam X system box. Moving on, I'll talk about some basic wireframe development in Master Cam X. I'll just go ahead and turn off the Operations Manager by hitting Alto to give us some additional workspace while designing. Here's the print that we'll be drawing from. Let's begin by drawing the one and a half inch line at the bottom. Before we start, I'll select Alt F9. This displays my tool plane, construction plane, WCS orientation, and origin location. To begin, I'll select Create Line Endpoint. 
As you can see, our ribbon bar is now available. I want to begin with my line on the origin, so I'll select the fast point button from the auto cursor ribbon bar. The fast point mode can also be entered by hitting the space bar on the keyboard. This fast point mode allows value inputs to be entered in the same manner as previous versions of Mastercam while still supporting traditional math functions. So I'll type 0, 0, 0 and enter. New for Mastercam X, the auto cursor has the ability to lock into horizontal and vertical placement by default. I'll select the config button from the auto cursor ribbon bar to show the settings menu. And here you can see why the auto cursor recognizes the horizontal and vertical placements. Moving forward, this line needs to be one and a half inches long, so I'll type 1.5 in the function ribbon bar and hit enter. I'm now locked into one and a half inches for my length, so no matter how I stretch my line on the screen with my cursor, I can only create a line one and a half inches long. So I'll use my auto cursor to find the horizontal position and click. My geometry creation color is set to green. Notice that our line is light blue. Light blue represents a live entity state in Master Cam X. While in this live entity state, we can change the properties of this entity by using the function ribbon bar. So for example, I'll change the length and angle of this line and notice that the live entity updates. I'll just go ahead and turn it back to its correct size. Once you're happy with a live entity, you would hit enter or the blue apply button on the function ribbon bar to set it and continue in the function. So I'll hit apply. Next, I'll create this 2 inch horizontal line starting 3.866 inches from our origin in X. In my auto cursor ribbon bar, I'll input my values and hit enter. This is a new way to enter point values in Master Cam X aside from the fast point mode we used earlier. I'll stretch my line horizontally and place it at any length. My line is supposed to be 2 inches long, so I'll enter 2 inches for my length in the function ribbon bar and hit apply. Next, I'll draw these 45 and 120 degree lines. So I'll select this end point and enter 8 for a length and 45 degrees for my angle and hit apply. I want to point out that for this line I entered my length and angle prior to sketching my second point. With the length and angle values input, Master Cam X had enough information to locate the second point for me. To illustrate the flexibility of Master Cam X, I'll create the 120 degree line by sketching its start and end point and then entering the proper length and angle. So I'll go ahead and select this end point here and stretch it somewhere out on the screen and click. I'll select 8 inches from the drop down in the function ribbon bar. Notice how your inputs are remembered. I'll then type 120 degrees and hit enter. My live entity display updated. It looks good so we can apply. Next, I'll draw this horizontal line 4.975 inches in the Y. I'll click here to enter horizontal line creation and sketch my line up on the screen. I'll enter 4.975 to place it, but this time I'll hit the OK button. Up to this point I've been hitting the apply button. The apply button completes your creation and keeps you in the function. The OK button completes your creation and exits the function. There are many ways to exit functions. Hitting the OK button, using the escape key, or simply selecting another function all of which are correct depending on your intentions. Next, I'll use the Create Line Parallel function to go ahead and complete the part. So I'll select Create Line Parallel from the drop-down. My dynamic prompt is telling me to select a line, so I'll pick my 45 degree line. My dynamic prompt is now asking for a placement point, so I'll pick here. Now I'll go ahead and create the other parallel line. At this point, my geometry creation is complete, and all I have to do is just trim it up. Here's the trim icon. I'll select Trim Divide. Trim Divide works differently now. It will trim entities that physically intersect back to their intersection. So watch as I trim this up. These entities don't physically intersect, so I'll go into Trim to Entity mode and trim them up. 